Hello all, my name is uh, Deep Ranjan. A very good morning to all of you. So today in this video, I am going to explain you uh, another project that is uh, leaf disease detection. Actually, it's not a detection. It is a kind of a classification uh, project, leaf disease classification project. So for that, uh, I have uh, like uh, I have taken a data set uh, that project that is present in the Kaggle. So this is the data set and if you can see here it has uh, five classes one is bacteria another one is fungi nematodes normal and virus so it has five directory that simply means we have uh, five classes here okay and uh, if you can see here there are two three nine files are present so it's a small data set that we are going to use here okay so come to the coding part okay so first of all uh, here I have provided the link of the data set, you have to just click on that and uh, you will be able to relay it to this page okay and after that I have imported some important libraries that we are going to use here so like uh, numpy pandas os globe cv2 so these are the basic libraries that we are uh, like uh, we were using from uh, like uh, uh, last so many days right and also we are going to use here tensorflow and inside that tensorflow keras is there they are right okay and pil import images just to read the images right to interest split is the excellent model selection library okay and inside tensorflow there is a keras pre-processing image data generator we are going to use so just uh, like a couple of uh, like uh, uh, from our images only uh, we are going to uh, generate some more images for our training purpose because we are going to train our model in a very small data set that is only 236 files are there right so we need to uh, create some more images on top of that one only okay so for that i am go going to use here image data generator okay fine and the uh, optimizer wise we are using here adam and for the accuracy uh, we are checking here for accuracy score and uh, np dot random seed values and matplotlib that these are things we are going to use here right so now first of all what i have done here uh, i have just assigned the path of the data directly so this is my data set uh, where it's present okay so i have just provided the path of that okay it's already present in my drive and i have a taken a uh, height of images like uh, default height of height and width of the images of 150 okay here it is one let me correct it okay just a second yeah so that is that and a uh, channel wise it is three because we are going to deal with the rgb images okay so now we are checking now how many number of uh, classes like how many number of classes are there in a data test so if you just uh, do the os dot list directory okay then you will get the number like how many directories are present inside that folder okay that data folder data set folder so now we are checking inside each uh, folder inside each subfolder how many images are present so if you can see here is in fungi is 50 nematode 49 normal 40 virus 44 bacteria 50 this many images are present in each folder okay so this is a function uh, so by using this function we are just uh, going to see some random images okay so for that what what i have initialized in this function uh, we have taken a target directory and also the target color target class okay so just combining those target directory plus target class is a kind of a string okay we are just concatenating concatenating it okay and after that we'll just uh, uh, like uh, doing the list directory so we'll see how many folders are like how many files are present inside this target directly and one by one uh, we'll try to show the images along with this target along with this class okay so if you can see here uh, these many classes are present five classes are there and uh, if we plot like if we run this uh, function with uh, the target directory and the target class so you can see here uh, what i have given here target directory i have given of the data set this one and target class has given it so class name so it will randomly pick how many values like 18 how 18 randomly it will pick images from this uh, five classes so if you can see here 18 images are there all are of different image size and also it is showing the image size uh, what is the image size okay 
of like a image present in our data set what size of it okay so if we can see 256 so we can take the like a size of 256 also but here i have uh, just taken the size of 150 so that is not an issue uh, our model will perform well that's not a problem so now we are collecting our data here it, i have mentioned the training data of, okay so it's not a training data we are collecting our data okay or complete data so what we are doing here uh, we are taking images from cv to the images path okay and then we are converting those images into array format and after that we are resizing those images into 150 cross 150 because images are images are present in the uh, pr like images present in the folder is of size of 256 into 256 but we have to convert them into 150 cross 150 so that's why we are just uh, resizing it okay and after resizing what we are doing we are just uh, appending okay in this list images list okay you can see here uh, i have created it like image data inside that list uh, we are just appending and image dot labels uh, res with respective labels they are going to append it inside this and after that if you can see here uh, like uh, how many like uh, what is the size of that uh, list oh, sorry uh, yeah the list okay so image data dot save when i care so 239 so 239 images are there of size 150 50 okay 150 cross 150 and the channel is three and how many labels are there 239 because we have a 239 images and along with their labels right after that we are just uh, doing like a shuffling okay we are just uh, shuffling our all images okay uh, that will help in our training okay that uh, that our mo model won't get overfit so just for that we are shuffling our training data training data or or a kind of a uh, complete data we can do that that's not an issue shuffling the data let me uh, change it from here also okay sorry for that let me change it okay then what are we are doing okay so we have a like a categorical so y value we have of a, like a five uh, like a five unique values we have right so what we are doing here we are just doing here a label encoding we are encoding that categorical column into a numerical format it is just trying to do that uh, and i think from our machine learning days we are doing this kind of thing to handle the categorical verifier we are using a uh, one hot encoding label encoding and so many encoding techniques are present okay so here i'm using label encoding okay after that what i have done the data i have displayed our data in train or test okay so here i have take, mentioned the validation but it's, you can consider it as a text also that's not a problem and after that you can check the shape okay shape and the sizes like uh, how many images are taken for the test and how many sorry uh, train and how many is for the test right so 166 167 is for training and the for testing or validation we have taken 72 only fine so now coming to the model part so first i have tried with uh, uh, some uh, random cnn layers like it's a it's not we are not using here organic if, uh, like a pre-trained model like a trend of a transfer learning i've just uh, randomly uh, created those uh, like a cnn layers like what what i have done here first uh, in first layer i have taken the 256 right kernel size of 333 activation function value input size of 150 into 150 and channel is 3 that is the thing here okay we have already defined this thing earlier also in our uh, first step right so after that what we have do, uh, done i have done here so another convolution layer then max pooling layer then convolution convolution max pooling then flattening layer and the dense layer after flattening we are just uh, creating one more hidden layer of uh, 512 512 cells neurons okay with the activation function relu and then just uh, did uh, like a one dropout layer also i have mentioned here and the in the last layer what i have mentioned here this five five simply means we have a classification problem and we have a five classes okay bacteria fungi nematodes number so that's why i have used five and activation function bias here i'm using softmax because we are going to deliver deal with the multi-class classification problem here so that's why we are using here softmax that's fine then just run it okay and uh, 
learning rate I have taken 0 0.015 epoch 30 Adam optimizer I have taken model dot compile loss function I have used is uh, categorical cost entropy optimizer is Adam matrix wise we are going to use accuracy okay then I did some augmentation the image data generator that I have told you we are generating some rank, some more images to train our models okay so we did something like we have done some rotation some zoom zooming of the images some width, width shift okay there is a right shift or left shift or kind of a thing we have done here nothing else okay then fit the model so I have trained this model for a 30 epochs right so if you can see here at the end it's 30 epochs I have got the loss of 1.15 and accuracy of 0.54 only okay and even in the validation also I have got the accuracy of 0.625 so still my model is performing well okay I have tested it okay my model is performing well but uh, in some of the cases is it not performing okay some of the places like uh, if I put the images of a normal one so it will detect as a virus this kind of a things are happening there I have already tested there okay so that's not so what I have done here I have uh, used there a transfer learning technique and for that I have going to use here VZZ16 so what I have done here created a folder with the name of create model and inside that I am taking few parameters first parameter is input set another one is a number of classes and the optimizers we are going to use here RMS prop but in the last layer only where the output layer is there in that one we are going to use softmax okay so here you can see here I'm just loading my uh, like a VGZ 16 layer so we are just loading its weights here okay and after that we are not going to include its last layer okay so just uh, like uh, only the weights parts we are going to consider only the CNN part we are going to use and the last layer the output layer we are not going to consider it so what we are doing this we are just taking the VGG system is con base model okay top model okay and after that we have added our own some layers okay so what I have done here I have added one flattening layer then again two hidden layers like okay and after that one dropout layer is also mentioned here of 0.25 to uh, 0.2 okay and in the last layer what I have done number of classes okay so whatever number of classes we are going to use like we have a five number of classes so for that yeah I'll mention here five activation function by softworks and top model okay then what I have done here keras dot model input set input so inputs will be the uh, this one this one this one okay this one's input will be the input to this model okay and what input it has which uh, if you could know like about the VGG section so uh, the model is trained on the size of 150 cross 150 step. so that's why I have taken the image size of 150 cross 150 okay that's why it meant and output wise this output layer the last layer that we are going to use have mentioned here then I have done the model dot compile for that optimizer we are going to use loss function is categorical matrix wise accuracy and we are just returning the model okay nothing else so input safe uh, you can see here 150 cross 150 learning rate and the Adam optimizer number of classes is fine and we are going to train our model for 50 box okay so this is the function that I have created inside that these all values will be passed okay so our model is ready this is the model is ready now what we have to do we have to fit it okay so before going to that what we have uh, I have done here I have a uh, like a use here live loss plot okay so what is happening in this live loss plot when you try to fit the model after each step whatever loss and whatever accuracy you will get it will try it will uh, plot it okay I will show you okay uh, I have done that it will try after each step it will plot it for you okay for it's a kind of a visualization thing that okay so it will uh, like it, it will help you to understand how my model is performing okay it is easy okay anyone can uh, see like your model is performing well or not without seeing that what what loss you got what your accuracy you got okay so what I have done that and uh, here I have mentioned about the model checkpoints and early start 
model checkpoint simply uses for the like a model saving like uh, whenever I got the best model it will just save it so I have mentioned here model checkpoint file path so this will be my file name okay and save only best model okay and verb was equal to one so whatever information it will show during the uh, fit model fitting okay and early stops means like uh, like if uh, our loss or accuracy is not going to increase or decrease for 10 more iterations so it will simply stop there okay so it means our mo uh, like our model will uh, say like your like a model is already trained or you, it is not uh, performing like it is not deviating much so you can uh, it will just uh, stop our training at that point of time okay so we have just done there vzz model that we have uh, created here so this one i got so vzz model dot fit passing x train and y y train pass size 64 i have taken epoch 50 i think it's mentioned there validation for validation i have taken x value and y value and callbacks are checkpoints for weight uh, so, sorry for model saving and early stop and this is early stop and this is for plotting okay it will generate each uh, it will plot after each iterations right and verb was is equal to one so if you can see here okay so you can see here uh, my training and validation accuracy is close to one so i think it's fine and loss wise also it is after 20 epochs it is uh, almost uh, same right so I can say that my model is performing good this point of time. Even I have plotted this one by using this uh, VGZ history dot history. So this one also you can see uh, like our loss goes like close to 0 0.1 or something. So I think it's a pretty good model, right? And accuracy wise we are touching the one like 100% accuracy or something like that. So no issue with that. Uh, even our validation data is uh, performing well. Validation and the uh, training both are performing well in this case so what I have done here just uh, saving my model and after that what I'm doing I'm just trying to do some prediction like I'll just try to check on what all images are my model is performing well so for that uh, let me take some images here okay so it will be easy uh, then it will you will be able to understand how my model is performing okay so let me take some random just take this one only first one i haven't checked it okay i'm checking in front of you so it will just give us a class okay so it's a class zero so you can see here uh this bacteria fungi nematodes normal virus zero one two three four right uh, we have done the level encoding right so, so it's a zero it's a one it's a two it's a three it's a four let me take some more like from the virus one so let me check this one one e let me take it uh, whether it's performing well or not i think so it's, it will perform because we uh we are got we got the accuracy of like a 99 percent or all that so definitely it will perform well uh, let me check it once again so it is giving us uh four so you can see that uh, the model is performing well and I have already saved this uh, model okay which is machine dot model so we can easily uh, like integrate this model with the flask one right and I have already created a video for that how we are going to uh, integrate our deep learning model on flask so you can check the playlist or check the YouTube video on that one also okay fine guys so uh, I think this is uh, good for this video uh, uh, fine Thank you. Bye-bye.